I said, I, I thank you guys for uh, bringing him on the show, but uh, Ultimate Stars was bringing him to a big event, so I wanted to make sure we, you know, we, we gave you the shout out because I don't want to hear you later complain about it. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I do, have to, yeah. I do have to, I have to clarify one thing. Yes. Yes, the winner is retired. It is now Mr. Technical Barry the Goat Horowitz. <laughs> Barry the Goat. All right, all right. I'll be looking forward to those new T-shirts. Yes, sir. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> okay, so uh, quick. Uh, let's, let's just get a quick rundown. Um, at the beginning of your career, you know, we, we kind of ask uh-huh. everybody, um, you know, where it all started and stuff like that. Uh, I don't want to get too in depth, but yeah, uh, you worked okay. for Vince Senior when it was uh, WWF, correct? Exactly, correct. Okay, now when when Vince, I, I don't, I, I guess it's not really Senior or Junior because they have two different names, but Vin, Vince Junior took over the company mm-hmm. and and brought you in. Mm-hmm. Um, what was said to you to kind of like change your character? as far as how you were going to be used in, in WWF and like, was it something that you were uh, not, not, I don't want to say uh, you agreed to, cause obviously you did, but like, were you happy with the, the change and how they, you, how you were being used? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah. Um, yeah, everything, all of the above what you just said, I just think, uh, on a personal professional standpoint, I think I could have been used a little bit better, and I'm not being greedy or anything. I mean, I'm appreciative of everything, but I think um, I think I could have been used a little bit better, maybe a little bit sooner for longevity. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I know you 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 dis, and I, I agree with you. I dis, I dislike the term jobber. I know you don't like that that term. Yeah, it's a, it's just uh, it's 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 slang and it's old school, mm-hmm. but it's really it's. I mean, I don't agree with a lot of things uh, in sports and so forth, but this is my sport, so I'm going to center in on that. But, right. I mean, the, the perfect word is enhancement talent. Right. That's yep. what it should be called. Yep, I think that's kind of what uh, the WWE kind of calls it now yeah, backstage. I think so. Yeah, yeah. So. They think they're just being cute by saying that word and, and what <laughs> have you, but, um, yeah, I don't, I don't totally agree with it. See, I, I I think with the the wrestling fan today, uh, they when mm-hmm. they use the word, most of them when they use the word jobber, they're not really using it as a, de- a derogatory term. It was, you know, it was one of those guys that on Saturday mornings you got this, you got to watch wrestle every weekend. Um, you know, mm-hmm. because guys like Hogan were never, you know, they were never on TV unless it was a pay per view mm-hmm. or something major. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so right. I, I think they. I think you guys had your own kind of uh, like fraternity. I want to say, <laughs> kind of, sorta. I mean, because you you had the Brooklyn Brawler. You know, he he, he mm-hmm. it was kind of the same thing. He, he he would never win, and you know, it was cheating or uh, something underhanded. Mm-hmm. But you know, later in years, when we all look back and we would go to these conventions and these signings and stuff, and and you guys stop popping up at these signings, we're just like, oh, you know, this is great, you know. You guys might never held mm-hmm. a title, but you were just you were remembered just as much as the guys who held the belts. Oh yeah, and I I'm gonna uh, correct on one little thing that you said. There's a difference between a guy coming in mm-hmm. and he just puts guys over, and that's his job. He doesn't really look professional. His his attire and so forth. I'm going back a few years now, but you could see what that is, and that's what you want to be now. As far as, as my career and my concerns, if you noticed, I'm always, the, my gear, my professionalism, my wrestling ability, and I emphasize wrestling ability, mm-hmm. was 100, 100, 120%. There's a difference because Barry would get beat, but people knew Barry could out-wrestle certain people. Right. They also seen Barry win. They've also seen Barry hold championships. So there's a difference between just getting thrown around the ring and pinned. Right. Because I, I, I personally, that's not what I was uh, signed up for. I signed up for to be a roundabout, all-around 
professional wrestler. Mm -hmm. Now, not everybody could be Shawn Michaels. Not everybody could be Hulk Hogan. Not everybody could be a winner. Not everybody could be Peyton Manning. Right. So, but if you fulfill your dream, I like how people knock, you know, the Cleveland Browns and so forth, but wait a minute. How about you went through high school, you went through college, you got, you got drafted second, you got drafted 15th, Tom Brady, I think, got drafted uh, 12th or something, but you, you make it, though. Even right. if you don't make it to Tom Brady's status, you're still first string in the NFL. That's huge. And I'm just using that for an example, but we could go to baseball, soccer, of course. and of course, you know, UFC, professional wrestling, and what have you. But uh, the people that stand outside the glass and point fingers and do this, what did they ever do? Right. Well, what were you doing? Were you bagging groceries somewhere? And I'm not knocking that, because I did that when I was 15 years old. But what I'm saying is, I, I fulfilled my dream. And these other people, it's just a common, it's just obvious jealousy. I Yeah, I agree. I mean, I just said a little earlier on the show that everybody's crapping all over uh, Brie Bella. Uh, I don't know if you've been, if you watch any of the today's uh, material, but... You know, she mm-hmm. kicked one of the girls in the face twice and knocked her out in the ring. And, mm-hmm. of course, it's an accident. We all know in wrestling, you know, injuries mm-hmm. happen. I mean, nobody plans right. for an injury. You know, shit happens. And people right. are crapping exactly. all over. And I'm like, what do you, like, stop, yeah. like, enough. They don't know any better. Right. That's that's basically, it's kind of ignorant. And they just don't know. They think they're part of the show and they're part with their signs and what have you. It's good to be fans and you pay your money mm-hmm. and so forth. It's good, but you should respect like they do when I wrestled in Japan for All Japan, the giant baba. When I went there, the, uh, you could walk down the street, and I didn't care if this happened, or, but you could walk past people and they'll separate. They respect you there like you're Tom Cruise or something. Mm-hmm. And I didn't care about that. I like the respect factor that if you don't know how to wrestle, once again, I emphasize wrestle in Japan, you're getting on the next flight home back to the USA. Right. Well, I mean, the different yeah, different so. cultures, and I mean, I, just from people I've dealt with, uh, mm-hmm. when you go to Japan, I, I, I've noticed that when people go to Japan, mm-hmm. they, it's, it's a lot mm-hmm. more focused about wrestling more than entertainment. Yep. And yep. when they come back, they're in so much better shape than they were when they got there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. I also heard the eating's pretty good out there, too, though. What's that? I said I was also told that the eating is pretty good out there, also. It's pretty good. It's, <laughs> it is it is good, but you, you will lose weight because, you know, you're used to your, you're used to different things. You know, when I was going there, I was, you know, it, it's hard to stay on your regiment and your diet and even the gym mm-hmm. is is like you would in the USA. It's just there's a gym on every corner and there's all different places for a variety of foods. But basically there you're talking about your rice and your fish and your chicken, which is fine with me, mm-hmm. but you're not going to get those big salads that you want, that red meat that you want. I mean, you can get Kobe steak and so forth, but, um, you know, it's just uh, more prevalent in the U.S. because we're used to that. Right. Okay. Okay. So, All right. So yeah. let's uh, let's hit up uh, one of our first questions. This was sent sure. in from Matt in New Jersey. Uh, he wanted to know about that the win that you had over Ken Shamrock in July of '89 at the Greensboro Coliseum. Was this a try? <laughs> was this a tryout match for Ken? And uh, did the WW or was this just a one-off for WWF? No, no, no. It was, uh, I think, uh, when Ken came there, I don't even think he used that name, Ken Shamrock. I'm, I'm not positive on that, but that was, I don't even remember what year that was, um, but it was a tryout match to just see uh, what he could do and so forth, and I think we were on first or second, mm-hmm. and it was at the Greensboro uh, Coliseum, North Carolina, and that was it. Uh, that was it, a tryout match for him. Because most of the time, the tryout matches are done at TV. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is when I was there. They're done at TV, um, mostly a dark match or what have you. And then sometimes they'll squeeze it in at a house show if they have time. Back then, they, I guess they squeezed it in and, you know, they could do what they want. But I don't know if they always do that now. I don't know what their protocol is. I, I remember the, I mean, the house shows back then. I mean, they were just from the first match to the main event was just 
like packed, yeah. packed full of talent. Oh yeah, phenomenal. Oh yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, it's crazy. I I actually have a flyer from uh, 1987 mm-hmm. that took place at Wagner mm-hmm. College in Staten Island, New York, and I counted. I wrestled there. <laughs> mm-hmm. I I counted. Um, there was seven matches. It was a total of 16 mm-hmm. wrestlers that were on that show. More than half mm-hmm. of them are in the Hall of Fame. Was I there at that show? Uh, you were not. I don't know if you were there. You weren't on the card for that show. Okay, because I have wrestled Wagner College. That was that was actually a staple for Vince. I mean, that was an that wasn't just you know like once a year. We were there a yeah. couple times a year because I liked going there. It was really good, good crowd, good area. So, uh, but I do remember Wagner College. Yeah, it was. It was uh, that, that's oh, kind of where I went when I was a kid to watch wrestling, and but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just amazing now. I mean, to to see that because we we go to occasionally we'll go to shows when they were in New Jersey, mm-hmm. you know, locally, and it's just you mm-hmm. you literally want to like take a nap mm-hmm. through half the show before you actually see something you want to watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, all right, we got mm-hmm. uh, Phil from New York. Uh, said, mm-hmm. is there anyone you didn't have the chance to wrestle that you would have loved to? Excellent question. Excellent. Yes. I would have loved, loved to wrestle Kurt Angle and wrestle him for about a good half hour. Interesting. No. And by that, I mean like a good a good Iron Man match or what have you, but mm-hmm. definitely 15 minutes wouldn't be enough. I would love to wrestle Kurt Angle for at least a half hour. Right. What, what about someone from uh, from your era? Oh, no, not really. I think I've wrestled almost. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't. No, I, can't, I really, not off the top of my head, I can't. I think I've wrestled almost everybody I wanted to wrestle. And, um, uh, yeah, I, I can't I can't think of anybody okay. off, off the top of my head. Okay, his uh, second question was in 1995, you were given a push. Uh, mm-hmm. What's your thoughts, and why do you think that they pulled back on it? Okay, as far as... Okay, so pushed me with Chris Candido, Skip, and pulled back on it? Yeah, I, that's what his question was. Oh, okay. I don't know. I have no idea. That's not my... That's not my decision. I mean, uh, I think the angle went good. I think everything went good about the whole project. Mm-hmm. Um, it actually, I mean, you couldn't go any further with it. We lasted about a year on that mm-hmm. program. So, um, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't, uh, I don't get that. So, yeah, there's only you can only do so much with that. I mean, well, yeah, you know, no, you of course. Can't, I mean, I, I guess yeah. what I think what he's what he was trying to you know kind of ask is you know how come they didn't can continue to push you uh, within the company? I have company? no idea. Hmm. It's a great question. I don't know. It wasn't on my end. I fulfilled my obligations. I know that for a fact. I could say that with a clear conscience. Okay. Uh, let's mm-hmm. see. We got another one. Just just send him. Trying to see where this guy is. Uh, mm-hmm. All right. This guy uh, Rusty he said, "Why did they have you use the?" The name Bret Hart? Very good. Mm-hmm. Excellent question. This is what happened. Uh, let me get this correct. Uh, let's see where I was. Okay. I remember I was in a meeting room in Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. And I was sent there by Vince Sr. to wrestle for, uh, at the time it was, if I'm not mistaken, Mid Atlantic Championship Wrestling. Okay. Jim Crockett Promotions. And I remember who was standing there, I think, in charge. One of them was uh, Michael P.S. Hayes. Okay. And he says, I came there from, from uh, went to Florida, then went to uh, the WWF, and I was Barry Hart. And he goes, hmm, your name is Barry Hart, and you're a babyface, but our heel manager is called Gary Hart. It's too much confusion. And back in the day, you could do it now, but there was too much confusion, mm-hmm. heel, baby face. They said, we're going to call you Bret Hart. And I said, okay. I mean, I was ecstatic. I mean, I'm making money. It's my first big territory, and this is a huge 
territory. You're wrestling six nights a week with the likes of Ricky Steamboat, Mike Redunda, uh, Jay Youngblood, Ric Flair, Bob Orton Jr. The list goes on and on.